What's up everyone, Alex here. Today, we're going to be traveling to the post-apocalyptic wasteland of the year 19xx, as we review Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise, hours later. Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise is developed by the folks at Ryuga Gotoku Studio, the creators of the long-running Yakuza series. The game features an alternate retelling of the Fist of the North Star canon, meaning whether you're a longtime Yakuza fan unfamiliar with the series, a fan of Fist of the North Star, or both, that there'll be a lot to find here. Personally, it's been over a decade since I've sat down and watched the anime, and given that I'm more familiar with the Yakuza series, I will be approaching this review from the perspective of a longtime Yakuza fan and a returning Fist of the North Star fan. You play the role of Kenshiro, a practitioner of the ancient Chinese martial art of Hokuto Shinken, as you search for the love of your life, Yuria. Throughout your journey, you'll fight bandits, lowlifes, and post-apocalyptic armies, drive through the desert with your buggy, and participate in many side activities that give flavor to your experience. Tying these all together are the numerous opponents that show up to challenge Kenshiro's fighting skills, all drawn from the source material. Simply put, it's the ultimate Fist of the North Star experience, featuring some truly visceral and gory combat, alongside some of the more off-kilter side activities that only non-canonical games can get away with. The Ryuga Gotoku Studio is well known for their expertise with brawlers, and Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise is no exception. The action happens at a smooth 60 frames per second, even on a base PS4, and all of the series' brutal execution moves are faithfully rendered, fountains of blood and all. The Hokuto Shinken style features assassination moves that require Kenshiro to hit certain pressure points to execute, and the feel of successfully executing these is well represented in the gameplay. Upon executing said moves, a quick time event occurs, prompting players to press buttons in time with the impact on screen. You'll never fail these sequences, but successfully pressing these buttons provide a ton of benefits. Unlike the Yakuza series, Kenshiro will find himself fighting a huge amount of opponents frequently, and Lost Paradise provides a quick and easy way to dispatch opponents. By successfully beating up an opponent and using Kenshiro's channeling skill, you can instantly defeat your opponents, forcing them to drop health, stars to fill your 7 star gauge, or death cries, which are literal expletives made of stone that you can use as weapons. Once you fill up your 7 star gauge, you can hit R2 and get Kenshiro into burst mode, allowing you to deal more damage and gain access to exclusive moves. The blend of these mechanics, along with the numerous combinations of punches and kicks at your disposal, separates Lost Paradise fighting style apart from the many Yakuza games before. And not only does the action feel fantastic and impactful, but it can also feel fast and frenetic, even if you've done the same QTE plenty of times before. The progression system in Lost Paradise requires the player to collect multiple colored orbs that can be used to unlock abilities in a complex multi-grid upgrade system. These orbs can be obtained by fighting enemies, advancing the main story, and participating in the game's many side activities. Considering that there didn't seem to be any way to tell when and how often you'll be getting certain colored orbs, it often became frustrating to try and experiment with character builds and turns the act of making your character powerful into a bad kind of grind, one that will reward people who already know what they're doing and punishing people who love experimenting with builds harshly. Even when I watched the Fist of the North Star anime, I never thought that the story was a hallmark of the series. And even though the developers gave themselves carte blanche on the kinds of stories they can tell in this universe, they don't seem to want to change any of that with the game's main story. For instance, Multiple surprises are delegated to times when Kenshiro literally says, I thought this person was dead, but I guess they're alive, ultimately being used as a MacGuffin to bring several characters back to life. In order to get players caught up in the story of Fist of the North Star, the game employs multiple flashbacks that unfortunately drag down the pacing of the first hours of the game. Pair these with some mundane main story tasks that have you driving across a mostly empty desert by buggy, which is not fun to drive by any stretch of the imagination, and you've got a main story that is uneven. Part filler, part engaging, but mostly disappointing. This is a shame, given that there are moments where you see glimpses of great storytelling here and there. But, for whatever reason, the developers felt that the story needed to be reined in a bit, 
despite a few times where they've embraced how absurd the directions the story could potentially go. At the end of the day, the main story is merely a vehicle for the game to set up some really awesome fights. The numerous side activities that pepper the game are actually pretty entertaining. The side stories give a lot of context to the game world, providing insight into the lives of people trying to get on by with their daily lives, with the minigames allowing opportunities for worthwhile distractions from your usual routine. These activities are the usual blend of wackiness and seriousness that fans of Yakuza have come to know and love about these developers, and their efforts are shown in full force in this department. I found that the quality of the storytelling in the side stories and the main story contrasts highly, as if a ton more time was spent making sure that the individual side stories were not only better, but also reflected a much larger intention of the developers to delve deeper into the series' absurdity. Much like the storytelling in the main story, I found that the localization is largely a mixed bag. While the localization does its job of conveying the original message, it fails to capture the nuance of the characters in the game. In fact, some of the voice sections of the game in Japanese sound like they have much more emotion than the actual localization text itself. The English audio track falls much in line with the localization and what I'd like to call serviceable. It does the job, but there's nothing special or exemplary to find here. What? On the other hand, the Japanese voice cast is comprised of veteran voice actors from the Yakuza series, each playing their equivalent analog in said universe. Hearing their voices is like comfort food for me, and provided a sense of familiarity to the game despite being away from Fist of the North Star for so long. With that said, I highly recommend changing the voice acting to Japanese, as it'll immensely improve your experience with the game. Nani. Though most of the veteran developers of Ryuga Gotoku Studio have moved on to a new engine for newer games, the fledgling team responsible for Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise managed to make a great looking game. The game features a pseudo cell shaded look that, remarkably, doesn't lean too far into said style, but one that captures the grid and feel of the anime and manga when set in motion. The sound effects in the game are fantastic as well, with some audio cues lifted straight from the Yakuza games. The same cannot be said, however, of the game's soundtrack, which is filled with generic hard rock and heavy metal stylings. There are a few notable songs here and there. Receive You, which is one of the three songs available while driving in the wasteland, is a personal favorite of mine, as it wholly embraces the 80s aesthetic that Fist of the North Star revels in, as well as a remix of Beethoven Symphony No. 9 that plays while joining the acupressure minigame in the clinic. In fact, much of the minigame music is actually pretty good. On paper, Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise felt like a perfect fit for the Ryuga Gotoku Studio to develop. Unfortunately, the end product doesn't feel like it fully utilizes all of the studio's strengths, and the main story's insistence that it's not part of the series' main canon felt like it wasn't fully utilized to the extent that it could have been. The game ultimately succeeds when it embraces its 80s influence, and whenever it indulges in its own absurdity but much of the game feels restrained due to some questionable design decisions. The developers had a fantastic opportunity to show a wider audience their talents and capabilities, many of which Yakuza fans already know about. But Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise is not that game, and, instead, feels like a game that has tons of truly missed opportunities, ones that not a lot of developers get often. <laughs>